Hello everyone to a new week. This will be our third week of the first unit. And before I start discussing our objectives for this week, I would like to reflect on our previous weeks. So in week one, we did an icebreaker. In addition, we introduced the unit and we discussed the key concept, related concept, global context, and the SOI statement. Moreover, we also later on emphasized human achievements and discussed how humans have made or contributed a huge impact on our society, which reflects the question on page six and seven, what are some of the issues facing the world? And if you remember, we discussed some environmental aspects that are, or environmental issues that are occurring, polit political issues, all right, human rights, wars, resources, health, okay? So all of these are issues that are occurring and we we, we specified in depth how, how they impact our lives. Moreover, we solved an activity that reflects some of the issues that the world is facing currently, okay? So these are the main points that we discussed in the past two weeks. And uh, during this week, we shall discuss the following. So our first lesson will highlight the following objectives and ATLs. In this lesson, we shall discuss how have some or how have different environments been damaged by human actions. So how are we responsible for damaging the environment? And we shall reflect here on the difference between wants and needs, how our wants and our desires for things that aren't really necessary have impacted the environment. In addition, I want you to create a PowerPoint presentations in groups addressing one of these the issues, uh, such as um, human impact, the war or the environment based on wants, such as paper and wood. So we need paper to write on and wood to keep us warm in winter. So these are wants, however, needs includes like cars, and um, these are reflective to pollution. Other needs are reflective and may be emphasized as a human impact on the environment. So you will create a PowerPoint presentation here and I shall guide you uh, to the steps of how you're going to create this presentation. And the steps of the presentation are somewhat reflective to your formative assessment. As I've mentioned prior, it is going to be based on criterion B and C, where you will create an investigation and you will communicate your ideas. So the PowerPoint presentation is a practice for your ability to communicate and you will investigate and research and find resources that are liable. Moreover, uh, the ATLs that will be covered in, during this lesson include the following, social collaboration because you're going to work in groups and you will research the information. The second lesson includes the following objectives and ATLs. In this lesson, you will identify the difference between primary and secondary resources. So when you create a re when you research or when you want to use a resource, it is very important to differentiate between primary and secondary. So if someone asks you, is this is this source primary? That means is it original? Is it authentic? Did you take the portrait as is, or did you take a reflection of the portrait, which is a secondary resource? And then you will discuss the purpose of diverse texts and evaluate two sources. So in other words, this lesson will focus on OPVL. O stands for the origin. Usually when you take a resource, whether online, from a book, from a diary entry, et cetera, you need to identify the origin of the text. So when I say origin, we are, are, we are going to discuss who wrote it, where did it come from, what is the title of it, what year was it published, etc. And the purpose indicates the reason why it was written. So some texts are written to inform, whereas others are to persuade, some are to entertain, okay, and some are to raise awareness. So in other words, here you must specifically explain or write a, a summary of what the text is trying to infer. And when I say text, that doesn't mean that you're going to get like a full text that is written. You might get an image. An image is a form of text. A brochure is a text. Okay. So we will go, we will investigate and we will, we will create a synopsis, a summary of 
the OP specifically, I will not delve in depth uh, in year one regarding the V and the L, which indicates the value and limitations. This is for year two and year three, grade seven and eight. So in this lesson, in other words, I will only focus on the O and the P, which is origin and purpose. Moreover, the ATLs will be communication. So we will communicate and discuss all together what are primary and secondary sources. And in groups, you will analyze or interpret or evaluate actually two sources. And this is a form of critical thinking because again, the sources in front of you, yes, the origin is clearly identified by just looking at the text. However, purpose, you'll need to dig deeper into the meaning behind the the text and try to deduce the purpose of why it was written in the first place. And finally, lesson three is going to be an explicit. So there is a difference between explicit teaching and learning and implicit teaching and learning. So I will discuss this in depth during the class, but for now, just to give a brief summary, uh, an implicit is the formative assessments. So the formative are like quizzes, okay? Or they're like any activity that you do in class is a form of formative assessment, okay? It shows me that you're implying the ATL skills in more than one category. So if we're doing an assessment, a quiz, this is a formative assessment because there are no marks to it, but it shows, it reflects your understanding and it reflects on me too. Uh, if you're asked to do an assignment, a homework, uh, to present inside of the class, to answer in front of, inside of the class, these are all examples of formatives or implicit teaching, okay, and learning, whereas explicit has to do with the ATL skills, the skill that we're focusing on throughout the entire unit applied somewhere else, okay, so one of the explicit, one of the ATLs are your, uh, are, uh, is research, specifically information literacy. So our strand or our main uh, our main objective or ATL for this unit is your ability to collect, analyze data, to identify solutions and make informed decisions. So when you create your research, whether for the formative assessment or the final, which is known as a summative assessment, you'll need to research information, collect them, identify their relevance, or if they're valuable or realistic, and you need to analyze the data, interpret it, paraphrase it, get or extract the main idea from it, and identify solutions to the issue. So remember, as I've mentioned prior, our main unit is about global interactions and how to solve, how can global interaction um, promote a globalized and sustainable future. So you'll need to provide solutions to existing problems and make informed decisions to whether, for, uh, for instance, these solutions are applicable or not. If not, then why should you even mention them in your research? So you need to think in this manner and and specifically in this lesson, I'll provide three prompts or uh, three statements and questions where you're going to create a PowerPoint presentation in a guided step. So I will tell you in slide one what I want you to mention in slide two, three, four, five, and six in details. And it's going to be a very quick, uh, uh, quick example of an explicit and this, this will reflect later on how I want you again to divide your slides or your divide your brochures uh, in the formative and summative assessment. So in other words, this also shows you, not only is it reflective to the assessment, it shows you how you might create a report later on in another discipline. Um, in science, perhaps, in criterion D, you might need to create a lab report or a report about a real life situation reflecting an issue. So it will be in the same form. You will have to have a research question, an introduction, a body, and a conclusion. However, here we just divided it into slides. Okay. So uh, this will be explained in depth throughout the entire week. And if there is any questions, do not hesitate and send me an email in regards to this video. And also, uh, anytime you feel the need that you need more assistance or help, do not hesitate and directly inform me. Have a lovely day, and I can't wait for a new beginning and a new week.